introduction to SP membership, where after I do the housekeeping uh, explanation, and then I will invite uh, Nabila from SP. Yeah. Can I say that? Right? From yeah. the SPKL section to to present to us on the on the SPE membership. So have a look at the slide if if all is needed or any slide that you want to remove. So I include this one. How about this one? Yeah, it's good. Is it? Yeah, good. What this? Mm, right, good. Good. How about this one? Look nice for the price there. Still, it's still valid. We're still good with this, right, Pani Uh, you ask me. We yeah. have one more, uh, one more round uh, to. Uh, actually, we have one announcement that I, I have to announce it this week. Uh, from the last one and third one, uh, still we didn't. Uh, we have one more round, and if we see a good uh, uh, respond, uh, hopefully. Um, map and Anvar uh, we go like this is what I request. We go like every two months, something like that. We will but how many? How many this watch do we have? Uh, we had three, so one already gone. The second round, also, I need to announce the winner, and so it's uh, almost uh, you can say two gone, but the second we don't know to whom. The third is still remaining. Okay. So this so the I slide. Just we, one left, one left, one lucky draw for this round. But but I mean that's the things. Um, I'm hoping that we get more because it's really worth it. It's like right now even maybe it's cheaper, maybe 200, 300 we can get. So we can get approval for having more and continue this promotion. This is what I hope. Okay, so should we put this slide on or? Yeah, you, you can you can just mention it. We had this, and we will have such a things. We can okay, say sure. we already had two times in last year, and then yeah. we will we want. This is our intention that we want to continue this promotion, mm -hmm. and then please yeah. highlight also the second uh, the second prize is giving chance to a speaker to talk. Like for example, this technical series is a good good pool to to let the other people come and talk. Sure. Or for a student, right. either for a student chapter or for a professional. So it depends professional. of their level. So there it is. We keep this slide. And what's next? How about this, Navila? It's a bit uh, busy, but actually, it's this the... you, you already. This is too, so crowded. Maybe you don't yeah. need to show that because okay. this was part of the flyer. Then uh, uh, valid. Just uh, except this is all the benefit that you can just say. This is all the benefit that I already mentioned. Uh, in addition, uh, you can just mention here SP has such plan like technical series, uh, like a young professional networking, and you can just uh, talk. You can just keep this slide and say instead of uh, um, uh, in addition to the international benefit that overall SP has, SPKL uh, put more beneficial and we are adding, we have more award, we have technical series, we have uh, more event that uh, kind of engaging and uh, get your contribution uh, by uh, by being a, a SP member. Sure. How about this detail here? Um, should we change the date or we uh, just no, no, let's keep it? This is just showing from the last okay. time. So, so just mention you don't have to continue like that. Yeah. All right. So then this is the last slide. So basically yeah. there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, uh, for slide. five and six, uh, you maybe don't go through Tesla. You just mentioned these things that I told that we had promotion as a SPKL. We, we are trying to even mm -hmm. provide more benefit and advantage for member and we want to get uh, more interaction. We want to let the professional get uh, connected. We want to a student help a student to be ready for joining uh, industry, things like that. Okay, so Nabila is good, all good? Nabila, you will be, is it all good? Sorry, here? sorry? For the oh, slides, yeah, yeah, it's all good. good? Okay, so then yeah, after that, um, I, I will thank we, you. Maybe we could, we could spend maximum of uh, five minutes uh, yeah, for the talk, right, Nabila? Five minutes, yeah, Nabila. So opening again, so we try not to drag a little bit because after this, I will have some a little bit more time to explain on the summary of the topics of today. 
and then I'll talk, uh, introduce Fatima Mehran on the profile, and after that, please welcome Fatima Mehran, and after that, I will stop sharing my screen, and Fatima will bring up the screen, and uh, Fatima will present until about around uh, 1 p.m., and just be before 1 p.m., just nice. Okay, fa Fadil, uh, Fayez, sorry. Yes. Uh, for having uh, me like you that you are appearing, what I should do? Nothing? I just... Sorry again? Like, for, like now we have a full picture of you. If I want just for 20 seconds, say hello to everyone without any slide, I just mm. need to not share anything, right? Okay. Yes, what we can do here, that if you start without the slide, uh, I can make you as a spotlight. Spotlight. Uh, I will. I will arrange the hit from from my end later on. Eh? When you start okay. speaking, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and I between Nabila, example. when between Nabila finish, and when I want to share my slide. I want just to yeah. say hello and thanks and all. So, ah, during the Nabila's. Uh, okay. After right. Nabila, uh, I mean, at the starting point of my presentation. Before okay, later. sure, sure. After you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I will uh, put you on the spotlight when I press that yeah. button, so you will be the on the on the screen for everyone to see. Yeah? Okay, so after this, um, you'll do the presentation. During the presentation, I will ask, uh, encourage them to ask questions for the Q and A. After the presentation, there will be Q and A around uh, twenty to thirty minutes. It depends on the questions. And after that, I uh, will have a Kahoot game. I will. Um, uh Okay, just sorry to interrupt. Let me know that by what time I should finish my slides. What time? Try to go 1, one. 1 p.m. Yeah, okay. 1 PM. Yeah, should be okay. 40 minutes around that. One one is max, I would say. I think. Yeah. I think okay. Uh, okay. And, and then um, a Q and A session. We ask uh, get a few question uh, from the from the audience from the chat box, and uh, we have a uh, fun games Kahoot. And then after Kahoot. There will be a group photo session. We'll take pictures. And after that, the closing remarks. Um, I'll do the closing, introduce the next uh, talks. So I think that's uh, that's the flow. Is there any, any other comment? All good, yeah? Well, all the best. Enjoy, everyone. Four more minutes to go. One more minute. Okay, I take it quick and come back. Okay. Hey, Fatima, yes. you are working from home? Yes. Okay. Hi. Yeah, this is uh, Sharifuddin Salahuddin. Yes, thanks so much for joining. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, uh, uh, Salahuddin, oh, you are my neighbor. I guess. Neighbor, where? I can't. No, sorry, I did a mistake. <laughs> anyway, come. I think we are not starting yet. In two minutes, we will start, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh. Welcome, everyone. Good to hearing you. We'll start shortly. Thank you. Thank you for joining.
Hello, welcome to those who have just joined us. We haven't started yet. We will start shortly. At the moment, allow us to admit um, and wait a little bit more for other colleagues and participants to join us. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are not officially started yet, but since you are waiting, I appreciate if you can write down in the chat that from where area and which company you are joining. And again, thank you so much uh, that joining today and hope you enjoy the session. So let's see from where we have um, Fahmi, Chadigari, Kai. Welcome back, Fahmi. Uh, Baker, from Baker. Thank you. Uh, uh, testing, sampling, advisor. Thanks for joining. You make me nervous, and it's a very high level joining this. <laughs> right, everybody is uh, excited with the topic well, today, yeah, Fatima. Very very thin, uh, energy solution, very welcome. Uh, from Exxon, Aziz, thank you so much for joining. I know okay. from Exxon again. Thanks again for joining. Mohammed uh, from University, UCS University. Good. Yeah, I think we are just uh, waiting for a few minutes, then by uh, Piaz will start. Okay. I think it's okay to start slowly, right? Can you hear me? Can I check that, Fatima? Yes, 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 we hear you. All right, perfect. Okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the SPEKL Members in Transition Technical Talk Series number two. And the topic today will be on artificial leaf methods and its importance in production engineering will be presented by Fatima Mehran. Hello everyone, my name is Faiz Latif from Smart Training, a malicious energy 
industry training specialist, and I will be the moderator of today's session. Thank you so much for your time to spend with us today, even though it's uh, in, the, in the afternoon, right? And I really love to welcome everybody and we hope that you enjoy the session. And very importantly, I hope everyone is safe, healthy and comfortable at your own places. For your information, this initiative from SPEKL section will be organizing 10 series of technical talks whereby there are eight more series after this and please please check on at uh, SPEKL section LinkedIn, Facebook to, to have more information about the next series. And before we start further, I would like to share on the housekeeping so that we can have a good session together. First one is I'll give you the estimate of the time of our session today. The presentation will be around 40 minutes and then at the end of presentation, don't go back first. Uh, please join us with the, with the Q&A session. If you have any question during the presentation, please drop your question at the chat box. And after the, pre the presentation from the speaker, we will get back to your question and we'll have the Q&A session. And after the Q&A session, we'll have a fun quiz in Kahoot Games and there will be prize for the winner of the of the session. And we had a very, very good participation from last session. And we'll see this time around who will be the champion of the Kahoot Games. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we really appreciate if you can mute your microphone if you are not speaking to, to allow the speaker to fo focus and concentrate in terms of delivering the message and delivering the information to us. For those who uh, have a question whereby is this session can be reviewed again for those perhaps your friends or your colleagues who want, couldn't be able to join. And uh, good news is that this session will be recorded and SPKL section will make it uh, public and for you to look back and learn again about this topic. And next one is about uh, if you have any question, like I, 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 I mentioned earlier, please feel free to put in a, the chat box uh, straight away during the presentation. You can put it in the chat box and during the Q&A session after the presentation, we will uh, get back to your question. And last but not least, to those who win the uh, Kahoot Games later on, please stay back. We will let you know how we will uh, give you the prize. As since we are all in the MCO or in the lockdown at the moment, definitely there is a way how we can give it to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we go further with the talks and uh, with uh, this initiative is come from SPEKL section, I would like to invite a representative from SPEKL section, Nabila, to talk more and give the updates on the SPE membership. Please welcome Nabila. Hello, hi everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Nabila. All right, yes. cool. Okay. Good afternoon, I am Nabila. I'm basically um, together with Fatima as the chairperson uh, for membership, SPE Cal section membership. All right, next speech. All right, so um, reason being, we would like to promote to, you know, all of you guys. I mean, there will be a lot of, a lot of um, benefits if you guys join um, uh, SPE Cal section. So as you can see here, um, for there are quite a number of professional benefits, you know, in terms of um, mentoring, ambassadors, volunteer, you can also volunteer in SPE um, talks or any other activities. We have got a lot, a lot of opportunities for that. Um, and then visibility, free education, and then on the left is basically, you know, the list of, um, the list of, um, um, basically the same thing is the benefit that we got, um, if, if, you know, by joining SPE. So the next, um, the next page. All right, for a student, uh, for SPE Cal section, it's this free membership. So, um, uh, again, it's, it's reflecting the same, some sort of a professional benefit that you guys can see. But this is particularly focusing on the student, you know, you guys will receive uh, mentoring, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, an opportunity for for um, other benefits like, you know, scholarship, fellowships, petrol balls, student paper contests, um, career guidance field trips. Um, well, the good thing is that our SPE um, Cal session is quite active. We, we, we just introduced a new mentoring um, mentoring uh, program which i think it will be a good opportunity for you know for for especially students or new um new newly join the industry to join all right the next one 
All right, this is basically uh, the extra benefit in pandemic. Uh, you know, we we have also um, you know aware that you know this this pandemic situation or this COVID has really has really bring so much impacts. Um, so there is some consideration in terms of um, membership. So there is a reduction in fee by 50% for Malaysia. And then um, there is a free renewal membership for those who lost their jobs. And then um, there, there is um, insurance program for SPE members. Right. Next one. All right. Uh, continuity from from the previous slides um, is is basically just emphasizing um, emphasizing the same same context or the same uh, message. So as you can see, these are basically the three uh, main benefits that that we something new that we provide. Um, during this pandemic situation. So it's we, we have started this since 2020 and um, we, we still have this throughout the year. So uh, as you can see the remarks there, members who are transitioning from student to professional upon graduation are also eligible to receive the first year of SPE uh, professional membership fee as you can see in the table there. So um, that includes the JPT online uh, only. So you know, if, if there is any uh, query about this this um, fees uh, about these fees, you guys can always reach us out. I, I've got a lot of um, I will call it change agents. Basically, the one those people in the SPE membership uh, SPE KL, KL section that 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 is helping us out with the to promote membership as well. The next slides. All right, okay, this is something new. I guess that we have been doing this um, for a few times already. Fatima is leading this. So um, this is basically like um, one of the promotion that we, we, we have. I mean, um, uh, we have some lucky draw. And, and I, I mean, you know, there is also a chance to present at one SPE Cal activities events. So if you guys would like to know more how to win this feedback, you guys can always reach us out or, or the those um, those people in SPE Cal session or you guys can reach out to Fatima is the, the leader for these games. All right, I guess that's pretty much OK. OK, this is basically the summary, um, the summary of, of the, you know, benefits by joining SPE. So you guys can actually, you know, student professional membership. Um, uh, and then that's basically wrap up um, the, the benefits that you got. You know, there is a free membership who lost their jobs. Probably this is something that I would like to emphasize. Um, you know, insurance program for SP members, uh, exclusive one petrol discount. So I guess um, that's, I, I, I trust that this is pretty much enticing to, to, to make people join. So register today and start winning the feedback. That's pretty much for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Navila. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, consider to, to join, uh, to register membership as we can section. As you can see, there's a lot of initiative uh, that we do for the industry, right, uh, for the community, and definitely it's, it's uh, really worth to, to consider. And with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to introduce you with the topic of today, artificial leaf methods and its importance in production engineering, I will read through a little bit more on the on the brief introduction of this topic. Artificial leaf methods (LMs) are used to lift the accumulated fluids from wells and to help sustain their performances. The LMs itself presents many challenges across facilities, onshore or offshore, and supporting skill sets. In this webinar, the different types of artificial methods will be presented. Furthermore, which method is most applicable and common in the region, Asia, and particularly in Malaysia, will also be discussed. And in the addition, the other factors of selection, the best method for artificial leaf will be given as hint. And ladies and gentlemen, for, for, for the next points that we will be presented today on the proper selection of an artificial leaf method, is depends on the production system, reservoir and fluids properties, well bore configuration, surface facility restraints, which requires a thorough understanding of the system. 
economics analysis is always be must be performed. And uh, last but not least, um, the speaker will share with us the relative advantages and disadvantages of artificial leaf system will be discussed as well. With that, I would like to introduce you with the speaker of today, Fatima Mehran. She's having 20 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. She worked in multiple projects as a project technical consultant and advisor in Middle East and also work as solution developments for production engineering and operation solution business development and marketing in Asia with Slumberger. Furthermore, she was working as a next instructor, gas leaf optimization solution consultant, digital oil field and flow assurance global leader for past three years. She is actively serving SPE workshops as co-chair or moderator and currently she is a chairperson on SPE KL and Global Production Award Community Voluntary. In addition, she is a regional champion for artificial, artificial technical section in Asia. We are all lucky today. We have to have Fatima Meran to present on the subject. With that, ladies and gentlemen, please sit back, relax and enjoy the session. And please welcome Fatima Meran. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Fayaz and Nabila, for for the information and uh, introducing me uh, with nice word. Um, uh, I don't want to take your time, uh, um, but I really appreciate uh, that you joining, and I, I hope I, I I try to make my slide that everyone can uh, get some benefit out of it because as we don't know the level of the audience, so I try to make it somehow to. Uh, to be everyone can gain something from it. So I mix the technical business, uh, business and uh, market value and um, uh, to also be beneficial for those are in a service company. So I will start now um, with uh, my slides. And here you are when you see that. Uh, let me know when you see the slide. You can see that by us. You yes, can see. Okay. I can. Yeah. Go ahead. You want to tell me something? No. OK, so as uh, I think already uh, Fayaz mentioned about the topic and uh, briefly talk about uh, what we want to discuss, or what about the uh, agenda. So I, I don't want to spend much on agenda. I go right away uh, to presenting. So we are starting to talk about production in, uh, engineering and importance of production engineering. As I guess some of you may be geologists or maybe reservoir engineer or maybe even different background, uh, but um, uh, production engineering, first of all, is very wide range. I mean, in production domain, we have again many specialists. Uh, including artificial lift uh, specialists, including uh, uh, production technologist uh, or a technician. So what we want to do, what's the main role of a production engineering domain? As you know, we uh, with all investment that we have done for seismic geology study, reservoir study, uh, actually the production is a kind of the sweet uh, part that we want to, we are very close to reach to the money. This all many years of study we have done through the uh, different upstream domain, we reach to the point that we are very close to reach uh, oil or gas uh, and we, we want to get a result out of it. So, um, and it has, a, as I said, it has a many uh, different domain, but that we can classify it in three uh, cluster. Uh, what we have to do as a production engineer first is a design. We want to make sure we have a perfect design, tubing design, casing design, compilation. We have to make sure that we also consider artificial lift design. As you see in my um, <clears throat> other slide, that artificial lift uh, is kind of 18, 90% is must for most of the field. As And as we, the field go mature and uh, go more brown, we actually see the more importance and more highlight of artificial lift. Uh, in short, I can say if you are production engineer, you have to have a basic knowledge of artificial lift uh, engineering. So uh, in the design section, what else we have to do? We have to do a proper sizing and proper equipment. And then there is a second silo, which is operation. So what we have to do as a production engineering operation, we have to maintain the safe operational condition 
condition. The parameter we have is temperature, rate, and pressure. So in any uh, target we have, either maintaining or increasing or safety, we, this is three parameters that we can play with, and we, we have to make sure um, that uh, the production operation is safe and um, meeting the target. And uh, to uh, try to uh, keep a control of that, obviously need a very good understanding of multi-phase uh, multi uh, flow uh, dynamic. Uh, and knowledge. So in, uh, in the other hand, when we are operating, we also need to optimize the production and do enhancement. The second, the third silo is a pipeline flow assurance and well integrity. Uh, if we done a uh, good design uh, as a part of operation, we have to make sure there is no integrity, either pipeline or well, things like corrosion, erosion, scale, wax, flow assurance, avoiding uh, any blockage, um, formation damage or casing blockage or damage by high pressure temperature um, fluid. This is something that uh, we, we don't want this to happen. Okay, um, so if we go to see how is the production system. Production system is actually a start Starting from around the reservoir, we cannot say production doesn't care about reservoir. Reservoir, especially around the well bore, is part of the production system. Although we normally just get the pressure reservoir and property from reservoir engineering, but again, we have to understand the type of reservoir, the reservoir characterization that we have uh, to be able to design proper uh, completion and then to be able to understand which artificial lift it needed. Even if it's not needed now, maybe it needed in future. I'm talking right now about when, when we are in the design and field development phase. If we are in operation phase, then again, when we see, okay, the well is not really doing uh, well and there is some problem, again, this is where we have to come back to artificial leaf and see what's the problem. So then um, it's uh, the production engineer is still taking care of tubing, any safety valve, any downhole equipment required to, to, to just keep controlling the pressure and temperature which is a, uh, especially pressure is a very main drive for flow. Then we have choke flow line, uh, riser and separator. So this is then when it, we end as a production engineer, uh, either we send the oil or gas to the tank or we send for sailing point. So the whole this area is part of our uh, engineering, uh, production engineering responsibility. And we have to have a good understanding of each of these elements. Although, as I said, we may have a uh, only completion engineer that is very dedicated to completion, but either completion engineer had to have a good understanding of reservoir production and artificial lift. I mean, we need to have all uh, understanding this area and then maybe become very specialists or uh, we need to have a dedicated person for one of this particular area. So as I said, uh, what is the main drive? Uh, I think it's a very simple physics. Uh, that we all know, but if we know that how it relate and how it uh, calculated, it actually solve a lot of problem when we are thinking about <coughs> solution integration. <coughs> so the main drive in the well and uh, any uh, any type of fluid uh, system, the main drive of the flow is the pressure. So unless we don't have any delta P or pressure difference, the flow it doesn't go. We always have reservoir pressure more than completion pressure. Otherwise, we don't have a flow. Again, we have to make sure every next point that we want to have a flow has less pressure to this. So to, to do that, first of all, we have to maintain the reservoir pressure, right? This is why the reservoir trying to always think, thinking about EOR or how to maintain the reservoir pressure, uh, sometimes doing gas injection, uh, water injection or combination of both or foam injection. So uh, so this is where we want to make sure the pressure main, uh, is maintained, that we have enough pressure to be higher than here, then the well started to follow. And same thing will happen in a wellhead or in a separator. We have to keep maintaining them uh, to, to be able to follow. So one of the things is important that, for example, um, and this is where artificial lift make a very major role because most of the time, uh, if uh, normally, if we consider one point above the uh, uh, completion and we call this flowing flow, this reservoir pressure, static pressure is the pressure when the well is uh, well is closed, right? And normally it's higher than flowing. 
Why? Because by, by the well start flowing, right? So we have to have a less, less uh, pressure than reservoir penetration, otherwise we don't have a flow. So the flowing pressure is always less than uh, uh, pr uh, static pressure. And by we increasing the rate, actually uh, the flowing uh, pressure will be drop. So if imagine one point above that, which is PO, if it's less than PWF, so we always have natural fellow. And if you want to understand that how many well uh, in general they are naturally flowing, is this number I don't know from where it comes, but it can be at the, it, in more or less uh, uh, kind of uh, true that is around six percent of the wells are doing naturally. And if we have this one more than PWF, it means that we have to have artificial lift, otherwise the well is dead. So around 90 percent of the wells worldwide need artificial lift. So this is where we can see the importance of uh, artificial lift because almost all of them will need artificial lift, even if they don't need now in the later stage when it goes to the because reservoir pressure will fall off anyway. So later we might need the artificial lift and we need to understand it and we need to understand which method is best for uh, our system. OK, again, back to the basic nodal analysis. I think if you are a petroleum engineer, you are already know what is nodal analysis, but how can we use it for understanding the artificial lift? So as you know, as I uh, is, uh, actually discussed, we have reservoir pressure as a constant, not all, not all the time, but at least for a month. We can consider assume that is constant and then this flowing pressure. So uh, and this is separator pressure. Again, we considered assume it as a as a constant uh, pressure. So what is inflow is where we start uh, increasing rate and we see the flowing um, pressure will falling off. And the other hand, when we start uh, 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 rating uh, the well, we will see the flowing pressure of this will be increasing. So the cross point is a nodal, a nodal analysis point, which actually is a maximum <clears throat> point or maximum capacity of the well by current condition. So most of the time, this is either doesn't meet. Sometimes if we don't cross, if they, they have no crossing, meet well is not flowing. So either the case no following or sometimes we want to enhance the production rate, we have to do something either in a red area or in a blue area to make sure the well behavior is enhanced. So what we can do, one of the way is, for example, in that case, we can do what we can, uh, this is current. So what we can do, we can do hydraulic fracture. We do something in the reservoir that uh, increase the pressure in following and we have some increase. The other thing we can do is, for example, ESP, one of the artificial lift method. It can be any other, right? I'm just wanted to understand and map this having artificial lift that how it can uh, show and how it can increase the well. So we can see by having ESP how much uh, rate is increased. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I think all of us are seeing only the first slide. Uh, on what slide are you? We are in slide seven. Thank you so much for raising. Yeah, yeah. We are still on the first slide here. The importance of production engineering. OK, let's I'm see. seeing the nodal analysis. OK, uh, yeah, I can see okay. nodal analysis. I, I believe the I'm one that nodal analysis as well. Who's oh, not okay. moving? Maybe yeah, they need to move out and coming back. Uh huh. Yes, right. maybe rejoin, uh, leave and join again, please. All right, Fatima, ah, okay. thank you. Okay. Please proceed. Right. Yes, so we saw the, the actually, uh, you see my cursor as well here or yeah? Yeah, yeah, I can see it moving. Yes. OK, yep. see how much we can have. Then again, different artificial lift method, maybe they have different type of effect on the well behavior, but we want to understand the concept now. OK, now what type of artificial lift method? We have plenty of uh, 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 methods that we can classify it as a gas lift and pump because all of the things uh, uh, that- Sorry, Fatima, would you mind waiting one or two minutes for them to rejoin again? Sure. Because I see uh, some some people are leaving. Maybe we, join, we wait one or two minutes. Sure, sure. Thank I you. Wait. No problem. I will go back. Yeah, there's quite a few actually still yeah, okay. seeing the first slide. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. But some of them as well have already seen the current model analysis, so let's give some time for them to rejoin. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the feedbacks. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Otherwise, I didn't know.
All right, I think I see the messages that people already rejoin and back to slide seven. Okay, uh, let me know if you need to just go back a little bit and start again. If it's okay, we can move on. So we, we reach here and I think this is maybe I just play a little bit of this. This is our uh, kind of production uh, typical uh, area that we are talking about production engineering. And this is how the delta P is a main drive of the flow and how each component and each production uh, engineering unit, even a small, make a play a role. And if we have a, a kind of safe uh, production or if we have integrity or we have flow assurance, if, if you have any issues, which one of these uh, main elements is artificial lift that we have to understand it. And this is how we play a nodal analysis to understand the well at the current stage. What is is it flowing or not flowing, which this showing that, yes, it's flowing and this is a maximum capacity. By the way, not all the well, this is showing this is maximum capacity, but maybe your well actually operating here. It means naturally you have some uh, kind of uh, potential to increase the rate. Yeah, you just need to adjust uh, the well head pressure. So, but when you, you want to either you don't have a cross, it, it means the well is dead, or you want to enhance this, this is where you have to do something, either in inflow or outflow, red or blue. So this is where is the current, and this is either you can do hydraulic fracture, one of the things is not part of artificial lift, it's kind of another uh, enhanced methodology that we have for uh, maintaining the reservoir pressure. And it, you can uh, add ESP, which um, it, one of the artificial lift method, it can be something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. This is just an example. And we have seen that much of an increase. So now we want to talk about artificial lift methodology. So maybe um, uh, the main thing that I think everyone here is gas lift, which we have only two types, intermittent gas lift and continuous gas lift, which again, continuous gas lift is more kind of common one uh, because uh, it's Hello. Hello. You hear me? OK, so either we have a, a continuous uh, or we have intermittent, which again, continuous is more common. Why? Because um, uh, it's easier. Uh, it's easier to design, easier to operate for, but it obviously need more gas. Intermittent is uh, good for the especially for dead wells that we want to start uh, Flowing when when it starts flowing, then will will follow. But normally at the starting point, we need more kind of uh, pressure, more um, uh, kind of push from uh, artificial lift to make the well flow. And also another benefit that uh, intermittent gas lift has is not gas is not continuously consumed, which means less gas. But again, the where to stop, where to start, this is an, a need additional knowledge and try error, uh, an error and a study to understand that. So for the pump assistant, uh, actually we have a lot of uh, different methodology of the pump, the plunger lift, beam or rod pump, hydraulic jet pump, progressive cavity pump or PCP and ESP, uh, which I try to actually cover uh, as much as I can today. So this is a very common artificial lift method out of the thing, the list we have see gas lift ESP rod from PCP, which actually in the next slide, I show you the trend globally. And I, I mentioned that how is in Asia. So uh, in another hand, you know, um, the other hand, we have a different type of uh, lift method. Why we have different type of method? Because each method is applicable for a special reservoir type or well type or situation. That's why the, the, the people innovated and in different technology to be applicable for uh, your every asset everywhere has a different kind of behavior and um, has a different type of flow. For example, we are starting with the rod pump, which is uh, kind of one of the first, I think, uh, the artificial lift uh, method that actually innovated in the world. And this is a very mechanical uh, uh, kind of lifting and uh, it's normally uh, work perfectly and very easy, low cost, it's for low rate and it's very perfect for heavy oil and it also can handle some sand. Then we have hydraulic pump, which is again a very low rate 
and has a very high cost, so it's not very popular. The most popular one or common one is ESP, although it's very expensive, but because of high efficiency and uh, high rate, can handle very high rate, it actually is kind of most or second most uh, common um, artificial lift uh, has been used globally. And it actually, there are. I will actually give a detail of advantage and disadvantage. But for ESP, cannot handle low gas or any sand. If you have any sand problem, is not good. Then is gas lift, which um, maybe I spend more time on gas lift for you because what is important to know about Asia and Middle East, especially, and the gas lift is more uh, common because the gas is very available and cheap uh, in all the asset petronas. Most of the Middle East and Asia have that gas is kind of cheap and uh, affordable, and it can be used as a recycling to enhance the oil well uh, performance. And it uh, can be applicable for very high rate, and um, it's especially for offshore because it also works where uh, for deviated and horizontal well without any kind of additional technology. Uh, so then we have a plunger lift, uh, which works uh, perfectly for gas lift well, uh, dewatering, and has a very uh, low cost. And then we have a um, uh, sucker road uh, uh, that uh, progress, uh, progressive cavity pump or PCP, which again, it's perfectly work for heavy oil, can handle some sand uh, and low gas. And uh, it's very good for high viscous, um, uh, viscosity uh, flow type. So this is one slide because uh, we want to see what you hear about gas well or gas deliquefaction for uh, understanding that this is not part of artificial leaf. But, you know, for gas well, uh, we have a problem that sometimes the liquid becomes so heavy and to it got accumulated in a way that reservoir pressure cannot uh, lift it up as a mixture of gas and oil, and then it the well will be dead. Uh, so this is sometimes that we use artificial lift for gas well as well. Even we have a case that we use gas lift for gas well. So uh, either by, and also there are other methodology, some pump and as well as uh, foam injection that it helps that the gas well uh, will be uh, alive again and produce. So this is uh, interesting. Uh, if you want to see a global breakdown of artificial leaf units, so the dark blue is ESP, and the yellow one on the bottom is rod pump. So I you can see uh, visually that the first uh, one is ESP globally, and the second one is rod pump, right? And then we have gas leaf uh, gray, and PCP is a third one, and gas leaf is a fourth. But uh, but uh, again, in Middle East and Asia, uh, this is a global uh, image, uh, which actually for ESP and rod pump is a lot in US, especially rod pump. And then we also have then second is Europe. So in in in, in Asia, we have again the gas leaf is more suited. ESP and gas leaf kind of uh, more or less the same. Uh, but in Middle East, for sure, we have more gas leaf. Uh, so if we want to also understand, as I said, gas leaf is important. This is another um, kind of a study has been done in Exxon um, by Mike uh, Johnson that's showing that why gas leaf is important because out of 49% uh, of the well that has been uh, used artificial lift method, 31% was performed by gas leaf. So this is why gas lift is more, more important and we hear more about gas lift rather than other technical. Uh, the other slide is about our market size. This is especially a good uh, slide for people they want to start career or they want to switch their career. Uh, because we, we can see by this study that I summarize here, uh, they kind of predict from 2020 to 2025 about the market value and the area is uh, active in artificial leaf and how much is the uh, value in a USD. So the companies are actively, they are Halliburton, Schlumberger, Baker, uh, Weatherford and other international companies. And you can see in the area we have Asia Pacific is one of the most uh, potential area that it can grow and we have America and uh, Europe and other uh, country and uh, also this is the the, the value uh, we have it from today which is 8 billion USD it can grow up to 10.3 which actually when I was researching I see even some predictions up to 13 USD uh, billion dollar 
um, market size. So it means it's really a, a good uh, growing uh, industry to be in. So if you you have a, a kind of a potential or opportunity to join or to switch uh, your uh, career, it's, it's a very good um, uh, market to be in. Uh, so this this um, uh, slide showing about the, the market size, but showing the based on area. So this is a US, the, 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 the first one, the blue one. And then we have a, a, a green, which is um, Europe. And then we have Asia. So as you see, Asia stand the third place after uh, US and uh, uh, Europe. And then after Asia, we have uh, um, South Africa, South America, and then Middle East at the end. So again, if you look at, you can break down the market size. Today is about eight, uh, 8 billion. So this is a portion of Asia that you can get. So um, now we want to go back to understanding about the constraint and what else we need to be prepared when we want to talk about artificial lift operation. So artificial lift, uh, so many of the time, either in technology, in university, or either in a, any course we go, we are focusing on one well. You say, okay, this well is good to have it for ESP, or is good for having rod foam or gas lift, and we are just focusing on one single well, how much we can maximize the well, how much we can maximize the production rate and all. But in mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. if you look at this uh, uh, actually facility, you can see every single well, you have a lot of facility and operation unit that it's connected with the well. So we have to have a good understanding of facility, which we need for artificial lift implementation and also the constraint we have. For example, if the well is perfectly can be double uh, in terms of operational rate, but the facility doesn't have the capacity to handle this rate or maybe high water cut or has some flow assurance issue, then this all the study and invest we have done on single well, it's just worthless. So this is why it's important before thinking about artificial lift, you just look at the, the facility and check, okay, imagine you could increase the well rate, but if the facility and operation can handle the rate, can handle that much GUR, or that much water cut of the uh, fluid we have. So again, if we want to classify the constraint we have for artificial operation, we can say either if we are gas lift or either is a gas or a power of the pump. So do we have any limitation of gas or power? Uh, normally, as I said, in Asia and Middle East, gas is available, it's cheap, it's perfect, but in some other area, even gas is available, but there is no gas facility to deliver the gas, especially operators, compressor and pipeline. Uh, what about network back pressure? Network back pressure, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar or heard about it, but this is where the manifold pressure, as I said at the beginning of the slide, the pressure is a very important and a main drive in the flow. So if we do by any action, one of example is artificial lift, that we increase the manifold pressure, then the manifold pressure become high and doesn't allow the other well to flow. So maybe we increase one well uh, rate by uh, spending a lot of money and effort, but because we increase the manifold pressure, then we don't allow the other well produce. So as a result, the production rate of the field will drop after all investment and effort we have done for one well. This is the thing that is important. We should not look at the well as a single uh, element that, okay, we increase the well and it's far. We have to have a bigger vision and look at it as a field. And the other uh, operational well and field cluster that we might have and you have to consider is well integrity, flow assurance, pipe erosion, uh, the water handling, liquid handling, or, or other ut utility uh, limit that we have such as separation and all. Um, so starting with the gas lift, gas lift is uh, very, uh, uh, I can say simple uh, in terms of um, understanding the mechanism. Uh, but it's not as simple as you see in terms of installing and operating. So it's a high pressure uh, gas coming to the analus and it will uh, implement, we have a gas lift valve that it will uh, go to the tubing, inject to the tubing and it try to, it has a two actually 
um, uh, actually has two uh, terms that help that uh, liquid flow. One, because it's gas light and has a very low viscosity and density, it helps that the heavy oil or viscous oil to get like a, a make a multi-phase flow and it helps that uh, it a little bit the heaviness gone. And second, because it, there is a high pressure, it helps, it's like a pump. It a pumping a high pressure, compressing the high pressure gas, it helps that, uh, sorry, the well flow. And uh, by the way, we don't have one gas leak valve. So again, as I said, this is a very specialist. We need a specialist. So we have a people, artificial leaf engineer, a specialist in gas leak that they have to design the location of the gas banderel, where it has to be, which one has to be open first, which is normally the top open and how we do this unloading and loading. And then the mandrel size, there are a lot of small, small things that um, need knowledge again for designing it for, uh, sometimes we need a workover, we need to change the mandrel size and all. And uh, this is uh, for one single well. And uh, some other thing that I have to uh, mention here, because we have a high pressure here in the analysis, this is the area we might have well integrity because you know every casing uh, we have a limitation of the pressure. So this is a, the, some of the kind of disadvantage of the gas leak that sometimes causing the well integrity, uh, especially in analog. So this is a typical gas lift uh, trend of the well behavior. This is a production rate and we have gas leak. As we can see, by the time uh, we increase the gas leak rate, normally the well start increasing, 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 till maximum time and then start decreasing. And this is a very good point that maybe you should, why, why is decreasing? Because then the, the inside of tubing, we have more gas than liquid and you know the friction loss uh, in tubing is more than liquid. That's why we have more friction loss and we start decreasing. So this blue point, we call it technical optimum gas rate uh, which actually, we, if you do modeling or you even calculate it by hand, which I think no one does these days. So you will see this point as a maximum rate you can get. But normally we don't take that. Why? Because we take around here, we call it optimum economical gas lift rate. Because if you want to get that point from here, maybe that much rate, this is a pressure, uh, this is a gas lift amount you need. First of all, and is to have, hello? You hear? So first of all, you have too much gas for a small increase. Secondly, the pressure you need is very high. And most of the time we have compressor cost, operational limit and all. So that's why this is not really practical and we take this one to account. So again, finding this point is need a study. It needs uh, to be a smartly be chosen which, which gas leaf rate we have to use. But now with the specialist, uh, the software, it's very easy. We can do um, like 20 trial and error easily in uh, node uh, analysis in one run and understand better. Okay, time to see what is the fact of gas leaf and advantage and disadvantage. So the first slide, I, I kind of highlight the advantage. So first of all, as I said, the source of gas should be available. Uh, and compressor, uh, which actually the compressor is kind of uh, kind of main uh, limit because it's very expensive, it's very costly. And second things we know that uh, proper mandrel design, installation, liquid compatibility analysis is pretty essential because sometimes the gas that you ingest Project um, to the liquid, it has a kind of, if we don't check the compatibility analysis, maybe they react even physically or uh, chemically and make some solid participation to make more problem for the well. So this is actually for any injection, we have to do this liquid compatibility. It's a chemical foam or um, any, any liquid mixture, we have to do this compatibility. So, but it's very practical for offshore. It's very practical for any deviated and horizontal well. It has no limitation on that. Uh, and as I said, most of the assets, especially in this area, we have gas available. And um, the other good thing is gas, uh, because of the pressure and lightening, it can also um, uh, uh, handle gas, some sand and solids uh, particles. So if we, ha we have well issue for sand and particle, this is a very good option. Uh, it's very suitable for viscous and heavy uh, oils. 
and it has a perfect for corrosion risk. If we have any corrosion risk in our um, component or fluid, this is a good, uh, again, choice. Uh, and then uh, it has a good reliability. Okay, what's the disadvantage then? Uh, first of all, if the gas is not present, then it's a no for sure. Uh, for that. Secondly, uh, it has a big footprint in a facility, needs compressor, needs pipeline, and especially for offshore because it's more expensive. So if we see uh, there is not enough, uh, you know, a space for facility, it's facility, we have to drop it. And as I mentioned, well, in integrity and high analyst pressure is another disadvantage of it. Okay, going to the next one, which is ESP, electric gas submersible pump, uh, is a is a first mm -hmm. common uh, uh, artificial lift method that used globally, and um, is a function of uh, lifting, you know, uh, by uh, lifting, uh, and it has uh, many elements. Uh, it has a separator gas because it's the pump itself is very sensitive to gas, so we have to all of them. They have a gas separator to make sure that the gas is, doesn't go to the pump because it will damage and it's very costly to, re, to, to repair it. And also the other uh, very important uh, or kind of uh, critical point of uh, uh, installing or implementing ASP is a, a cable candling because the cable has to go down to the well and um, it's actually a, a lot of a space, a lot of tubing a space it will be um, taken. Uh, but in a recent technology, there are a lot of new innovation that help to easier handle the, the cable management for the ESP. So the advantage is very durability. Is a, it's a very uh, easy to keep it for as long as you want, as long as the whole uh, asset is performing, you can rely on that ESP. Uh, it can, um, can be used uh, 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 for collection of both dry and wet impurity. And also it has a low operating cost, although the capital cost is high. And the collection efficiency, uh, the, the efficiency overall is very high. It can reach to 65%, which actually the other uh, artificial lift meadow is about 30, maximum 30%. And it handles uh, large gas volume if we have a good separator and the heavy dust loaded at low pressure. And overall, it can handle a, a high uh, rate. So normally ESP used for a well that really valuable. We don't use ESP for a cheap well or a small well because it's costly. But when we invest for a very strong well, it's really worth it because imagine 65% of efficiency, how, how it can, if you turn it to money, it's really worth it. So what is the disadvantage? Uh, because of the each pump is applicable for certain uh, certain uh, rate, this is one of the disadvantages. It's not flexible. It's not flexible if you want to change the rate or um, plan for field development plan. Although you can add the stage because ESP come as a stage and you can add it, but still uh, this um, the area is limited with um, that is kind of uh, limit the flexibility. And uh, also it's reliable on uh, electrical power. So if we are short in power, then it's not a good choice. And it has a poor solid handling. So if we have a solid problem or sand problem, then it's no. Uh, poor gas handling. Uh, and as I said, again, this is one of the disadvantage, but with the new technology and new ESP is a very efficient gas separator installed within the ESP and it helps. Uh, rod pump is actually the second uh, uh, most uh, or maybe one of the uh, most uh, common uh, artificial lift and I'm uh, and especially in USA uh, in, in America and uh, globally around 600,000 wells already using rod pump and it's uh, the mechanism is easy is mechanical uh, it call it rod pump beam pump and in somewhere even they call it donkey pump. And um, uh, it's very good for a small well, uh, you know, in, for example, in America, you have a house, uh, someone owning the well. So especially for those a small well that is owned by people, uh, they all use a uh, rod pump because it's easy to maintain. It's very cheap and it doesn't need a, uh, uh, it doesn't need a, like a high maintenance and all. So again, if I want to clarify it or just highlight the advantage and disadvantage, it's a, uh, uh, it's a mechanical energy and easy to maintain. Uh, efficiency is quite reliable, I mean, quite good uh, compared when we compare it that is simple and easy to operate. 
um, uh, it actually uh, pumps the well down to very low pressure. Even very low pressure, it can work. Um, so it's even applicable when we have a very tiny tubing and a very a slim hole. And it also works for multiple uh, compilation and high temperature and viscous oil. So these are three main uh, kind of term that it really works for in terms of fluid property and completion type. Uh, and uh, it's easy to move it when you're done with well and uh, like the well die, you can use it, reuse it and move it for the other well, or you can use it for a certain time in a well and then use it for uh, the other wells, which minimize the cost. And uh, so what is the disadvantage? One of them is the solid sensitive. It doesn't work with the solid because it's mechanical. It has a lot of friction and kind of bring the kind of fatigue. Uh, so for the tubing and casing is, is a little bit uh, not easy to, to maintain it. So um, it has a low efficiency for gas wells, especially. It has a limited depth, so it's not, it's not used for offshore because of the big uh, kind of space again. And also because of the, especially because of the depth, it's not used for offshore. Um, and um, yeah. I think we cover all. Let's go. And this is actually my slide. I just want to get you uh, familiarized with jet pump operation envelope. We don't go to each because it takes uh, a lot of time. But again, jet pump, uh, just to get familiar with uh, operation envelope, uh, it's maximum uh, up to 6,000 meter TBT can operate. And this is a up to maximum 260 degrees Celsius. And about corrosion handling is excellent. It can handle gas and solids. And sorry. And then uh, for offshore application, again, is excellent and efficiency is about 30%. So if I want to give a, uh, I will have a slide that show you as a table is easier to understand. But I, I want to talk about well integrity overall in artificial lift. Um, one of the main thing I already mentioned, gas lift. Uh, for many aspects, it can um, bring the well integrity issue. One of them is leaking the tubing because it, every mandrel, if it doesn't work well, there is a multi-pointing valve. If, if one of them uh, kind of um, fail, then we have a leaking. So this is one problem. The other problem is casing analysis integrity, which already I explained that it can actually damage the casing and the weld. And um, again, casing cement integrity. Uh, especially for high water cut from <coughs> cross flow between reservoir zone. For the pumps, uh, we have uh, well integrity at the beginning. We don't have any well integrity. Normally it's very good, but as well getting older, there is a casing leak that can result by passing uh, and it can be uh, considered mm -hmm. as well integrity. And also uh, the other integrity in general for other uh, pump I want to discuss because the pump actually play a lot with the pressure. We want to maintain, increase the pressure. And we know so many of the solid participation and flow assurance are very sensitive to temperature and pressure. So when we have any artificial lift, any pump, we have to make sure during that increasing and uh, going up and down with the pump and increasing pressure, sudden increase, we don't cross the safety area for uh, for any solid participation. This is something that we don't want to open it up in that uh, presentation today, but this is a consideration we have to uh, take before thinking about artificial lift. Uh, so now we want to think which method is best for my well, right? We a little bit get familiar with different type. So there are so many factors we have to put in uh, to consideration when you want to select. One of them is well parameter. How much is the depth? As I, you see, some of the artificial lift are not for deep. Some of them are working well, but deep. Is it offshore? Is it onshore? Uh, is it a multi-compilation? Is it one string or dual string? Then production condition. Uh, what is the flow rate? What is the GUR? What's the water rate? Do we have sand? Do we have a solid? Is it high pressure temperature or not? Surface facility, do we have enough capacity in terms of handling water, handling uh, compressor, pump, the high pressure? This is all the things. Then fluid property, density, viscosity, solid, scale, pressure, temperature. This is considered as a fluid property and reservoir parameter. 
to be considered and more more important HSE consideration, especially if we have a CO2 or H2S emission. Well, integrity we already cover. Uh, profitability factor, uh, which actually um, for each one, after technically we select, we always have to do at the end economical analysis to make sure, okay, for example, if we want to increase our wealth from 10 to 20 percent, you know, 20 percent, 30 percent, even 5 percent, you know, we have to evaluate the cost of the money we get by gaining the oil production. Is it worth it to spend a lot of money and, you know, uh, well, uh, closing well and do all this? Uh, so is it worth it or not? So today we don't talk about that. I just mentioned it, but this is a very good example. I think this table is very applicable, especially if you are in FTP or you just want to do evaluation because in a lot of time we are doing a lot evaluation for a lot, a lot of well. We don't go to the deep kind of calculation. If we want to really implement, we have to go to the detail analysis and study. But for now, uh, you can see we have all type of um, artificial leaf here and we have the, 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 the things we have to consider. Is it onshore, offshore, horizontal, uh, how it's operational depth, having problem cor corrosion or not, uh, the capital cost, the operation cost, the facility footprint, reliability, um, a solid handling, system efficiency, and all. So example, for example, I want to have a well that uh, has a horizontal well, for example. OK, we'll see which uh, type of uh, uh, artificial leaf is good for horizontal. ESP good, gas leaf good, uh, hydraulic jet pump is good, and PCP also good. Now we understand this well also has sand problem, solid problem. So which one is good for solid problem? Gas leaf and PCP is excellent. So, uh, so we have now two choice: a gas leaf and PCP that have two or a star. But because of the efficiency, for example, is excellent. I I, I selected um, PCP. But there are other factors. You can also do further analysis for economic, the cost, and all. So this is just example of two parameter. But for each of them, we have to go and select the best. So I think. Uh, this will be my last slide that just give you oper uh, overall uh, view of how is the artificial leaf units versus operational rate comparison. So you can see plunger is least and gas leaf is uh, the maximum one. Uh, so and then before gas leaf you have ESP. So if you have very high rate, either you have to use gas leaf and ESP. And there are many other factors that I already mentioned uh, in here. So uh, now uh, this is my last slide, but I just want to, this is my references. You will get it later when the slide will be shared. And then I also want to talk about if you are interested in that topic and you want to know more about different artificial leaf, different um, you know, methodology case study. Uh, actually, there is a technical section dedicated for artificial leaf from last year, which uh, uh, actually I am the Asia uh, Pacific Regional Champion for that. And you can join this. Actually, I think this this is the, the link. You can join the link. And mission of this is uh, not only giving the knowledge and technical series, it also we want to uh, give uh, uh, this opportunity for you to present your case. So I was looking for a presenter. I am very uh, welcoming any idea you have for share your knowledge, share your case, even if you are um, kind of uh, interested in any specific topic. Um, we can bring from anywhere uh, in the world, especially now with MCO, to have the technical session that is required for your for a, your area, your asset. So you can either tell me the topic of your interest or if you have any case study. And what we have done so far, especially for Asia, uh, this is a kind of uh, showing the, 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 the member and we see uh, this technical section is very um, kind of high um, uh, people are more from US and Europe, so we don't have much in Asia yet. And that's why I uh, encourage you all of you, if you can join this, it's join, only join in LinkedIn, then you get notified of what's going on, what technical series we have, uh, what other plan we have, and you also can nominate yourself for presenting your case. So what we have done, we have last 
year uh, a kind of webinar for artificial leaf specific for gas leaf with uh, uh, our resources in from Australia and Kuala Lumpur. I was the moderator and it really went well. And then what is coming in, in, in August, we have again from Petronas and Partamina, uh, we have a panel session. So I just joined there and hopefully with your contribution, we have more things to come. I, I will uh, like to uh, say thank you again for your uh, attending today. And uh, I'm open now for any question you have. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Fatima. Thanks yeah. for the good presentation. It gives good overview about yeah. the different artificial lift methods. The my, my question is: uh, uh, Is there any tool or software available in the industry now that enables the production engineer to do study and select the the most optimum artificial lift scenario over yeah. the entire field life, including the technical, operational, and economic uh, aspects? Thank you so much. Very good question. In fact, I had provided a slide for that and then I dropped it. I wish I just keep it as a backup. And then I said, I don't want to marketing. That's why I drop it. But there are many um, software now available. I used to be, a, as Shilamberger, I was a pipe sim instructor and pipe sim uh so i they, they all of the method especially common one are available in pipe sim in prosper and these are the two i know but i'm sure there are other software available and if i don't know if you work in a country especially for university i know because i give uh, i was following with university and we uh, from Schellenberger, and i'm sure from other company they give a free license for a student so they can use this software and if you are in company, so you can, you know, yeah. ask for uh, buying that software. Yeah, there, there are actually, and it's, uh, it's re really without software, it's not easy to optimize or design. I mean, right now everything is in software. Right. I Thank mean, you, I mean man. to, I mean not just to do the like the feasibility study in, to uh -huh. just to do like the comparison between uh -huh. different artificial left. Yeah, yeah. For the you mean economical part? Yes. Uh, for okay, for different type of artificial leaf, so you can model it technically and select, and then for that there are economical model as well that simplified. Uh, you can use those. They they are actually software. One of them I know from Schellenberg again, Merak. There are other also economic. Even some of them are easier. It's very easy to use. You just add what you want the unit and what you want to select and it gives you with some uh, dollar uh, kind of unit and uh, oil price and it will calculate and give you. Yeah, there are there are. I know one of them is Merak, but the others I, I don't uh, remember. All right, thank you. Thank you for the question. I believe it's from El Said Oda from Petronas. All right, Fatima, thank you for the answer as well. Please allow me as well to uh, pick the question from the chat box. Fatima, I will read the question to you and uh, it's, it's for you to discuss on the question. There is a yeah. question from uh, Yunus Tagayev, right? Uh, the question is, are there any ESP in well not seabed applications and case studies for deep water fields? To you, Fatima. Uh, can you repeat the question? <clears throat> the question is, are there any ESP applications and case studies for deep water fields? Uh, I don't recall it now in my mind, but I am sure if you uh, search like in SPE, deep water ESP, because uh, ESP is actually, as I said, is high efficient. And uh, between ESP and gas leaf, if I want to say which one is better for offshore, um, if especially gas is not available, ESP is best because um, it's it's a good for deep uh, uh, you know wells and it's for offshore because it also it doesn't need a big facility like gas leaf need a big footprint for facility but for esp only power is matter so um yeah i think if you search there are many paper will be up here thank you thank you fatima i hope that's answered your question uh yunus and um, the next question from rosmaya rosmawati the gas lift system, are they smart 
can I monitor and control it via surface panel? Uh, yes, there is with the uh, new, um, again, new innovation technology, digital oil feed oil. There are uh, some uh, that uh, uh, technology that offer that is can be uh, be smart and can be monitored and controlled, especially from mandrel size. Uh, but uh, in case of, uh, um, yeah, there are some gas leak optimization that has been done by monitoring digitally and kind of a smart way. But again, this question can be a very, uh, in a various level, in which level we want uh, to change the, to uh, control the well and monitor the well. Uh, yes, but in 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 an action of uh, kind of closing and opening valve, this is something that um, this is something that I know there there was some promise, but personally I didn't see it myself. All right, thank you, thank you, Fatima, for the answer. It will be interesting technology to have a smart gas lift system very very soon. Next question from Nikhil Hardika. The question is, have you seen any significant improvement in artificial leaf operations after using AI and ML across the field? I believe AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Am I correct, Nikhil? Um, machine learning is, is a very new and fashionable topic. And I believe in all area, uh, the people are working on that, trying to do that. Uh, for artificial leaf, I see a couple of articles, but um, I mean, I, I've been in Schellenberger and I know that one of the things we were working on the development was bringing artif uh, this artificial intelligence to part of the optimization, gas leaf optimization. So I, I cannot say yes or no. There is something going on, but is it implemented in any field yet or not? This is something that I'm not sure. But the thing is, the technology and the trend is going toward that. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, Fatima, for your opinion on the on the question on the AI and machine learning from Nikhil. Um, we have uh, another question, right? Uh, let's have a look at the question from Rick. Uh, Rick asking about, could you please comment on why the use of ESPs is a relatively recent application in Malaysia and jet pumps have hardly been used at all in this region? Uh, okay. Uh, if you look at the slide, um, uh, uh, depends of the well. Um, jet pump is very good for. Um, let me go back to my slide. Do you uh, still see the slide? So why Malaysia come recently to SP? First of all, because it was less uh, less capital cost needed for gas lift because most of the case gas is available, right? And most of the time, gas is not sellable in somehow because they have some impurity in it. So for asset manager, it was easier to use the gas as a recycle. You cannot waste the gas and also you can use it for enhanced oil. This is the best uh, kind of um, condition you can have that use the gas and for gas leaf. So why it was the most gas leaf because of that reason. And now ESP comes now because as the oil, you know, the oil <coughs> price uh, become less uh, become less. So actually drilling and exploration become more expensive and production become more important. Now the, the kind of um, oil and gas industry, they realize that if they invest more on production, they gain more. Instead of drilling new well, they rather to enhance the production of existing well. And that's why the, the cost of ESP maybe in the past was too much for them to start. But now when they look at increasing the fuel rate by either uh, drilling new well or exploring somewhere uh, wells, uh, rather to investing in existing well by ESP, ESP cost is nothing comparing drilling, right? So that's why the new trend when it comes that you have to invest in production. And I believe because I was in production and business, uh, you know, development, and I know that recently industry uh, invest on production more than before. Before production was nothing. 
we have all invest on geology, seismic, and you know drilling. We had all efforts and invest on that. But because recently we realized that really is important, that's why we a little bit uh, like oil company get relaxed to invest. And because ESP has uh, especially very high efficiency and it works very for a strong well, that's why maybe the trend goes more to ESP. Thank you. Thank you for explanation of Fatima. I think because of the time, we will have to pick only last two questions from the audience. And uh, the, the last two is from Juhaida. The question is, is it possible to overpressure the top side gas lift piping if the design pressure of the piping is less than the reservoir pressure? In the case, if there is tubing leaking or casing analysis or a cement integrity issue? Question. Uh is it is it uh, can you repeat it is it possible to uh, what is it possible to over pressure the top side gas lift piping uh -huh. if the design pressure of the piping is less than the reservoir pressure in the case if there is tubing leaking or casing analysis semen integrity issue so over pressure from the top side gas lift piping and um, if the design pressure of the piping is less than reservoir pressure uh so uh, okay um i got but there are many ways to resolve the this integrity problem first we have to uh, limit the pressure we don't need we shouldn't exceed the pressure because if we exceed to resolve that issue is is very difficult either either we have to change the casing or pipeline which is very costly so we don't want to do that so the best mitigation is to not let the pressure increase the uh, pressure limit of the design because if we want to change anything that already installed it's very costly so most of the case is not a solution to go for it and um, if we need that high pressure from the gas lift uh, in the analysis, uh, then uh, if we think about how we can reduce it um, this is uh, this can be another question because uh, as we go deeper uh, in valve, then we have a higher uh, injection in the wellhead casing or analysis, right? So what another mitigation can be we redesign uh, or maybe close the uh, bottom valve and try to open upper valve. Then in this way, in the compressor, we need less pressure. This is another mitigation we can that. Uh, and then uh, for sure the, the efficiency may be as not as deepest, but uh, we, we have less pressure and we open the higher, uh, higher valve. So this can be uh, another solution. But I mean, I am not working as an operator, right? I mean, I'm not working as operational. I was more on the study and modeling. So the, the solution I'm giving you is all from my modeling perspective that, OK, you can do that and see how well works. And how it works with modeling and study, you try and try and error with a different parameter and see the well behavior. But now operationally, is it possible or not? I cannot comment on that. The only things I know for sure that you cannot exceed the pressure limit and then think about the solution. Excellent, okay. excellent answer. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. I hope that answer the question from uh, Juhaida. And the last question from the uh, for this session before we get into the Kahoot game session after this is from Mior Yusni. The question for Fatima is what will be the best artificial leaf method for a subsea well? Subsea well, so uh, it's uh, um, again uh, it's 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 not easy to answer because as I showed you in the table, there are many factors. Okay, subsea well, is it viscous or not? Is it it has a sand or not? Right? Uh, what is our facility? You know what is uh, our reservoir pressure? So normally I can say gas leaf and ESP overall are working in a subsea. Uh, well, so but again, we, we have different type as well that we have to look at the different criteria. OK, thank you so much. Uh, Fatima for the for answering all the question of uh, Q&A session and uh, it was excellent and wonderful sharing and explanation on artificial subject. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get some fun with the Kahoot games to test our understanding and get a chance to win the prize. So please let me uh, share my screen for a while and um, prepare your, your phone to get um, join this 
Kahoot game together, there will be a few simple or I think it's a bit complex question it will be there. Yeah, as you can see, um, game pin, please go get into Kahoot.id and uh, enter the game pin 789788. Thank you, Ryan, Mohammed, Aiki, Waiki. That's the energy that we want to see for this game. Yeah, let's give some time for all of our participants or guests to join. We have Ganton G coming in. Zik is joining. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to join the Kahoot game now. Go to the browser of your phone, type kahoot.it and then uh, put in the game pin of 7819788. We'll see that's understanding of what's uh, the topic today and stand a chance to be on the podium and win a chance some of a special prize for today. Franklin, Nural, thank you. Welcome. We have 22 now, 23. Jisa, 24 at the moment, has joined us. Welcome, HH. It's a hungry name, is it? Madhu is joining us. I know it's a, it's a lunch time at the moment. We'll soon, very very soon, we'll conclude the session and uh, definitely we'll have some uh, good games first. At the moment, twenty six joining. Does anyone have a struggle to join the session? I I go welcome. If anyone struggle, let us know. We'll try to assist you. Sign out again. And we'll join back. All right, one more minute, then uh, we'll start very soon with the questions. The question for your information are prepared by uh, Fatima Mahran herself, speaker of uh, today, and the prize is sponsored by SPL Section MSI. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go with the first question, Kahoot, and all the best to him. First question, what is the main role of artificial leaf? The game is the faster you get the right answer, the higher the score that you will get. Well done, 25 of our participants have got it right. And let's go to the next question. Have a look at the scores, Hazix. Take the lead for this first question. Number two, what is the most common artificial leaf method in Asia? It's hotly discussed this now, very fast. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay, the answer is gas leaf. Gas leaf is the most common artificial leaf method in Asia. Let's have a look. It's getting more and more scores. Chan is getting in, Franklin getting to the top five. Let's go to the next quiz. Which method got its name from an animal? Yes, B. Um, guess it. BSP. Hmm. This one is it's actually the name drawn by the animal. Oh, hi. Rod Ham. 
20 of you get it right, right? And uh, all, there is another chance for others. So the next question, Chan is leading now. Nurul is getting the higher speed. And let's move on to the next question. Number four, is it true that increasing gas lift rate will always result in increased gas production? Yes, no, yes, up to a certain point. Always result in increased gas production. Okay, let's have a look. Neural is taking the lead. Oh, I think this is all new five, top five at the moment. Well done. There are a few more questions, don't worry. Which method is the best for high production rate? Best for high production rate. ESP, gas lift, PCP or rod pump. Hey, wow, right? Majority answered so, yes, but unfortunately, it's not the right answer. The right answer is gas lift. And have a look at the scoreboard. Hakimin will come to the top one. Right, no rule is getting down. But don't worry, we have three more questions. Three more questions. The faster you answer, the more score you get. Which other method has high service and maintenance fee? Repeat that at the beginning of the game. The discussion is now. Press it, press as fast as you can. The answer. The faster, the more score you can. Well done, 20 of you get it right. Oh, there's a fire. There is two board eh, from Hello. Which method is perfect for heavy oil? Heavy oil. Also being discussed in the discussion now. Hey, okay. well, distribute almost equally, right? And uh, the right answer for this question is both gas leaf and jet pump. Well done to those who get it right. Aki is joining the top five scoreboard. And last question, which method is risky for well integrity? Risky. All of them, or a gas leak only, ESP only, or what? All right, well done, 18 got it right, and the right answer for this question is all of them. Well done, well done, thank you everyone for your participation. Number three. On the podium with JMG, well done. Hazix is number two and number one. Seven out of eight question got it right. Hakimi. Clap to Hakimin. Well done. Well done, Hakimin. What will happen after this, Hakimin? Please stay back with us, the committee, to, uh, to understand on how we can uh, provide you the, the prize. And the prize will be the reload of touch and go directly to your account and it is sponsored by SPEKL section. Well done, well done Hakimin and thank you everyone for joining. I hope you enjoyed the session, a Kahoot session just now and it's time now is for the good closing part of it and uh, I hope to welcome everyone for the memory. We want to snap all the group photos and how do we want to do that is feel free to open the video, right? Show your face and smile together in front of the screen. And I'll be the virtual photographer for the session. And, uh, and uh, in the count of uh, one, two, three, later on, I'll give you a shot of everyone, yeah? Okay, let's. Semua malu-malu aja, all shy-shy. All shy, yeah? All shy, shy. Don't worry, don't worry. Those who cannot, not really comfortable, right? Maybe you can, you know, a little bit of your face, it's fine. Who Let's else want to join us with the photo group photo? Eddie, can I join lah? Eddie, paling handsome. Thank you, Jeremy, for joining. 
Okay. So I'm taking the photo now two times, yeah, one formal, one informal, one and two and three. Okay, let's have some fun a little bit. There is informal one, one, two and three. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. I would like to share a little bit more on my screen at the moment. I would like to share you what will happen after uh, after this session because we promise you back to back of the of the uh, technical series by SPEKL. And uh, as you can see at the moment, for next week we'll come back with the same um, same event of the this technical talk series. Tomorrow next week will be presented by Baba Moradi and the topic entitled hybrid physics based data driven methods the future of petroleum engineering i think it is very very uh, interesting topic to join and it will be the same day wednesday at the same time 12 pm to 1 30 pm and um, on 14 july 2021 there is no registration required and the times come you just have to scan to join or you can always go to the the link in of sp kuala lumpur section follow us follow them and definitely you will get more and more interesting update over there. And uh, with that, thank you and stay safe and take care everyone. Goodbye for now. Assalamualaikum.